Hello and welcome back everybody. It is I, Necromanticer, once again. As you may know, Phoenix has still been experiencing some technical difficulties with his computer, so I'm going to be taking over this next episode, but he should be back to normal schedule right when we get to next episode, so don't worry about it too much. As you can see, we've still got this workshop area setting up. I've got the power station set to come right across. I am going to be bringing the electrical wire down twice just to make sure that we have enough to power both sides of the workshop. But more importantly than any of that, we have a whole new update to bring you all. We've switched over to the 2.8 update, which brings you the bureaucracy tab up here, as well as prison grading, and replaces those both with the logistics tab. Sadly, we cannot actually... Oh. It seems that these are separate kitchens, which means we're going to want to change that up. That way they can all work together. Let's see. Go back to logistics. But in addition to all that jazz, we also have a new bureaucracy that we're going to be needing to grab pretty immediately, actually. Micromanagement. This is going to allow us access to both of the other options in logistics, the laundry distribution and food distribution. That way we can make sure that when we set up a secondary laundry, we can appropriate the uh, load of cell blocks evenly, so to speak. So that's going to be on the agenda as we continue on. They also added in these lovely little search bars, which are a bit of a helpful, but I still think that the menus are a little bit lacking, and I'm quite dissatisfied with just having the search available because that still doesn't make anything simple or easy to use. You still have to stop what you're doing, go to your keyboard, and type out what you're looking for after you have to remember what it is you're looking for exactly. So it seems like a bit of a filler little bit of an update, so I'm not terribly excited about it. Hopefully we'll get something a bit more substantial in the future, but for now, this is what we have. The deployment, I'm actually going to change both of these rooms to staff only. Let's see, is there anything else? I think that we gotta make a room right here and here so that... Oh, and here, yes. That way we can have our prisoners set to not use the outdoors. Otherwise, they're going to be constantly grabbing contraband from out and about and bring that into my prison. Which, as you can tell from the... Where is it? Intelligence tab. We actually have the supply and demand set up for all contraband over here. And we kind of have a contraband problem. A little bit more than I would like, but in order to fix some of that up, I think we're going to need to modify the regime, son. First off, we're going to move the shower up an hour. Set up a bit of work right after that shower. Followed by a full meal. And then I'll give him some free time. I'm going to take away yard time pretty much completely as it's a bit wasteful, let's say. So we're going to leave them with some free time after they eat to take care of their needs. Then, you know what? No, I'm not going to leave them with any free time. Let's send them right back to a lockup, a four-hour work schedule, followed by two hours of eating, followed by more lockup for the night. Nah, eh, you know what? Let's give them a little bit of free time in the middle there. Hmm... That looks to be a good regime. I'm wary of setting a big schedule like this for so long, but six hours should be enough that they don't wet themselves in the meantime, because I've been noticing that my prisoners have a bit of an issue with controlling their bladder, and I'd like to remedy that. But now we have this new workshop pretty much completely set up. I can drag this on over to designate it properly, and if I go into my reports, I can start setting up some programs to actually teach my workers some skills. Namely, the workshop safety induction. Hmm. Let's see if we can get another work saw and press. Oh dear. There we go. I think I spent a little bit too much on that press, but either way. That way we can have a full classroom schedule once we set that up. And let's get some kitchen and safety going on. That way we can have some 
prisoners working as cooks over here. That should do nicely. Is there anything else that I want? I don't have a classroom set up just yet, and pharmacological treatment is very pricey, so I think this is all I'm going to use for now. Let's set that up just to make sure that they fill the roster completely, and that should have them coming right on in when that becomes available. Let's see, do we have... yes, we have all the relevant grants, which means that it's really just a matter of taking some time to actually complete this workshop and get my prisoners working in there, which means I can set my maintenance to start gathering alternative forms of money over here by demolishing all these trees. It's a bit of a cheap way to do things, especially if you're deciding to whether or not to start with forests, since forests can easily be turned into a sort of cash farm if you just spawn with a large map of them. But at the same time, it still fits the aesthetic, and I think it works out rather nicely. Let's see, the power station's working out well. Once my workmen dismantle all those trees, they're going to be bringing the logs back to this workshop. So I want to set up a few extra tables. Let me measure that out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine before the tables. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine before the tables, so another table here and another set of tables. And I'm going to want to station a guard in there just to make sure that we have full view of that at any moment, just in case I want to start selling things off. One of the great, just absolutely fantastic new additions that they had in this last update, though, is this deployment scheduler. Now we can actually start making it so that guards only swarm the canteen during meal times and we can actually let them leave the cell blocks during the meal times as well so let's see 10 11 7 and 8 let's see 10 11 7 and 8 those are going to be meal times where we stack the canteen with guards possibly the kitchen as well that seems like a good idea and we have work scheduled 8 9 three to six. Let's set up that schedule as well. And anything in sleep, 12 to five, I'm gonna set up as a third schedule just so we can have the guard dogs patrolling for uh, tunnels that are being burrowed out of these cell blocks. That should work nicely. I really like the fact that we managed to squeeze in six hours of lockup. That should do us really nicely because as a part of prison grading that we haven't quite unlocked just yet, that will become rather important later. But we can switch back over to deployment. Hmm. In order for us to set up the night dogs, we're going to need pathing around the prison. So I'm going to see, can we afford that at the moment? Switch over to my concrete tiles. Let's see right about here. One stretch costs about 700. Yeah, we're not going to be able to afford that, so maybe hold off on that for now at least. Instead, we can still set up our deployment of the guards for work time. As you can see, we can set it specifically to work. Set them in the prison and the kitchen and one in the cleaning cupboard. As well as we can take them out of the canteen as well as for meal time we're going to want a bunch more in the canteen and several more in the kitchen just to make sure that we have adequate coverage otherwise that should be a nice schedule we've got all these logs pouring in that we can begin selling to make extra cash to hopefully pay for the massive amount of paths that i'm going to be wanting Sadly, they stack up at a kind of obnoxious rate, so I'm just going to skip through most of this, and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, there we are. We sold off most of those logs. Anything else that gets brought in should be turned into wood. And now that I have the workshop actually set up with the proper workshop safety, sadly, half of them didn't pass, so we need to start another program. But... Now that I have this set up, I'm actually going to have prisoners making me things, so I'm going to need an export 
in order to start selling those and increasing our prison income, which right now is rather poor. Let's see, can I invite any new prisoners into the fold? Uh, nine, we have room for six. That'll mean three in the holding cell, but that's perfectly acceptable. So let's have them coming in for the morning. Now that I have this export set up, I'm going to want to pave the area just to make sure that my workers don't get caught up trying to deliver goods back and forth. I can also increase my capacity in this workshop by just a smidge, just to make sure that I've got enough. And I still have quite a bit left over to handle incidentals. And by that, I mean I'm going to start creating the foundations for all the extra areas that I'm going to be including in the prison so that I can make sure none of my prisoners need to head outdoors. So let's first off create a secondary yard over here that I'm going to be using for a sort of enclosed area that I can route prisoners through to the workshop and probably a classroom over here. So in the meantime, I'm going to want to set up doorways just so that I don't have to worry about those come the future and that will still be enclosed. I've got enough that I can actually make it nice and pretty so let's make sure that it's a yard worth taking care of. Set up my entrances and a nice circular path of tiles, concrete tiles, some asphalt across the middle and time to coat the rest of it in grass just to keep it looking nice. This is my general aesthetic that I kind of go for with any sort of yard. I've tried some other designs, but I think this is what looks best, and so I try to emulate it whenever I'm creating a new yard or other sort of outdoor type area. As you can see, this is what it looks like when it's basically done, and it really just makes a very pretty, pretty room to be housing your prisoners outdoors. Let's see, now we need to create an area over here. Let me just take a quick measurement. We've got 12 by 33, which means we're going to need 35 up and 11 across. Yeah, we have the cash for that. This is going to be a second expanded cell block, basically mirrored across this large hallway here. And that should set us up perfectly with this canteen to have the path coming around and a shower up top because I think a shower of this size can hold about 16 prisoners which fits perfectly with this setup so mirroring it across this hallway works beautifully as well oh dear we have a prisoner trying to pull something not sure what but apparently we just hid him under the bed <laughs> a little bit silly Let's go with that, but we should have this set up pretty soon. And last but not least, we're going to have this area needing to be enclosed. And let's do a quick count of what we're going to need. Two by two hallway, then one nine across, so that's going to be 11 to house other prisoners. And then another two by two hallway, and that should be good. This is going to be a, oh, I don't quite have the funds for that, which means a little bit more tree cutting, but once again, we can skip that if it comes to that. Let's see, objects, just dismantle them. And this time, this little forest is going to be taken out, and a couple of these, and last but not least, I'm going to take out these last remaining trees over here. What is this that I have set up? What? Did I set up a workshop down there? Probably just a misclick, but there we go. Now, do we want to decorate this yard some? I, mm, I think we can spare a few lights. That should be all that we really need to make this yard look good. There we go. And right across from both of these doors as well. And this should be plenty well lit. Do I, I have enough for a few weight benches? It's only going to need four, so let's include those as well. And this yard should be about done, so let's designate it as well. Come over to the yard. 
And in fact, I'm just going to drag the yard all the way down and turn this common room into a yard as well. That should give them a little bit of recreation when they're in the yard. They have most of their family needs taken care of by these phone booths. When we have the money, I'll probably be bringing those down a bit as well. But for now, they're fine as they are. Selling off just a few of these logs as they come in so that I can have a little bit of cash to work with. Ooh dear, we don't want them to be cutting those up just yet because I'd much rather have my prisoners working on the license plates for the grant. So let's make sure that's happening. Programs. That wasn't programs at all. That was a prisoner. We have a few more interested, so let's open that up. They should be training tomorrow. This kitchen hygiene and safety doesn't seem to have made any progress, but no matter. They'll start it up eventually. And I think I'm going to break with it here just so that I could sell off a little bit more. No, wait. Let's get some utilities set up, and then I can take a break. Bring it all the way across. And I'm going to bring this utility line down as well. As up to the showers. So that should work out. This is going to be about where I break it off just so I can sell off all these new incoming logs. So just a moment. Okay, now we have all of those logs sold off. We have another nice little sum of money that we can deal with. As well as it's the middle of the night, so I'm going to run a shakedown. You have a better chance of finding prisoners tunneling if it's sleeping time, so that's when you generally want to run your shakedowns. The counterpoint to that is that you sometimes disturb the sleep of inmates, which can cause them to be a little bit more prone to insurrection, but it's generally not a big enough fear to worry about. It's much better to find tunneling prisoners rather than let a few fright a few fights break out. Uh, sell off these last logs, however they came about. I want them gone. And... Oh dear, we have a long line for the solitary, but let's have a look-see at our supply of contraband. That went way, way down, especially for luxuries, so that's really good to see. Hopefully we can completely clear that out before too long, and hopefully keep it down, but we'll worry about that later. Let's see, now that we've got the extra cash, we're going to want to create this second building up here, like I said. I have to remeasure it now. Two, um, one, two, three, four, five. There we go, six, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let me check, three on either side, plus nine in the middle, minus one for the edge, and yes, this is the perfect area for the little side construction that I'm looking to be setting up. I'm also going to want to take care of this set of tables and create a set of doorways there to the outside that, while isn't going to be used, will make for a nice little setup there. Objects, doorway, do I want double doors or just a pair of single doors? Let's see. A pair of single doors, I think that would work better for the three wide exit. Then again, I'm going to use a third door for this solitary. And be sure to wall off the laundry because I don't want people to be constantly heading through the laundry in order to reach solitary. That just seems unsafe and a little bit unnecessary. We can inconvenience my guards just a little bit. Um, let's see, change it to the regular schedule, put them over there, and another guy over here in the new cell block area, and that should work out just fine. Let me see, just to make sure that schedule holds, it does, that's beautiful, that is absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's see, the workshop's coming along nicely, what's the program at? Okay, now the class is running. It looks like they're actually performing quite poorly. The bright red line is their chance of passing, and the red line is the chances of them not passing. So you kind of have to worry when the line looks like this, because it's probably only going to yield, well, I would say about <laughs> maybe two 
prisoners who can actually work in the workshop, which is not a nice number because that's only seven. I have more machines than that. I would like for them to have enough prisoners to fill up all of these slots, but that doesn't seem to be an option right now. Now that we have these areas all brought indoors, I can change the deployment of the outside area, and I think that's going to be enough for one episode. We can come back and see how Phoenix handles this new workshop and all this extra space in the following episode, as I'm sure he should have everything back up in order by the time we get back. So thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure building this prison, and I hope to see you in the next episode.